Hello everybody, I am Erika Lumapeso. And I am Carla Jean Amosalita. And today, let's talk about subdural hematoma. A subdural hematoma occurs when a blood vessel near the surface of the brain bursts. Blood builds up between the brain and the brain's tough outer lining. This condition is also called a subdural hemorrhage. In a subdural hematoma, blood collects immediately beneath the dura mater. The dura mater is the outermost layer of the meninges. The meninges is the three-layer protective covering of the brain. Involved in subdural hematoma is the brain. The brain is protected inside the skull by three separate layers of tissues or meninges. The first layer or the innermost layer is the pia mater. It is a thin, delicate membrane that lies on the surface of the brain. The second layer is the arachnoid mater. Covers the brain and pia mater but does not follow the contour of the involutions of the brain. The outermost layer is the dura mater, provides a thicker and tougher layer of protection. These layers define three potential spaces for blood to collect. The epidural space between the skull and the dura, the subdural space between the dura and the arachnoid layer, and the subarachnoid space between the arachnoid and pia layers, each with its own potential sources of hemorrhage. The pia matter is too closely adhered to the brain and too fragile to act as a barrier for blood, and therefore there is no potential space between the pia and the brain for a hemorrhage to form. So let's talk about the subdural hematoma symptoms. Symptoms of subdural hematoma depends mostly on the rate of bleeding. In head injuries with sudden, serious bleeding causing a subdural hematoma, a person may pass out right away or even go into a coma. A person may appear normal for days after a head injury, but slowly becomes confused and then passed out several days later. Here are the common symptoms of subdural hematoma. Headache, confusion, changes in behavior, dizziness, nausea and vomiting, lethargy or excessive drowsiness and weakness. So what are the causes of subdural hematoma? Subdural hematoma is usually caused by a head injury, such as from a fall, motor vehicle collision, or an assault. The sudden blow to the head tears blood vessels that run along the surfaces of the brain. This is referred to as an acute subdural hematoma. So there are two types of subdural hematoma. One is the acute and the next is the chronic subdural hematoma. Acute subdural hematomas. If you sustain a major brain injury, this area can fill with blood and cause life-threatening symptoms. This is also called an acute subdural hematoma. It's the most dangerous type of subdural hematoma. Acute subdural hematomas form quickly, and the symptoms appear immediately. About 50 to 90 percent of people who develop acute subdural hematomas die from the condition or its complications. While the chronic subdural hematomas are usually caused by mild or repeated head injuries, these are common in older adults repeatedly fall at and hit their head. Some chronic subdural hematomas occur with no apparent reason. The higher rate of this condition 
in older adults may also be because the brain shrinkage age. This causes extra space in the skull, allowing the veins to be more easily damaged during a head injury. Symptoms of chronic subdural hematomas are noticeably immediate and may not appear for several weeks. So chronic subdural hematomas are easier to treat than acute subdural hematomas. However, they can still cause life-threatening complications. So these are the possible complications of subdural hematoma. First, we have brain herniation. Pressure in your brain can move tissue away from where it's supposed to be, and this can also lead to death. Second is more bleeding events. If you're older, you're at a higher risk of another hemorrhage as you recover from the first, especially if you have a head injury. And third, we have seizures. You may have seizures even if you've treated your hematoma. These are the risk factors of subdural hematoma. Um, first is we have medicines that thin the blood or using blood thinners. Um, Long-term alcohol use. Medical conditions that make your blood clot poorly. Repeated head injuries such as from falls and very young or very old age. Treatment of subdural hematomas depends on their severity. Treatment can range from watchful waiting to brain surgery. In small subdural hematomas with mild symptoms, doctors may recommend on specific treatment other than observation. Repeated head imaging tests are often performed to monitor whether the subdural hematoma is improving. More severe or dangerous subdural hematomas require surgery to reduce the pressure on the brain. Surgeons can use various techniques to treat the subdural hematomas, such as first, the burr hole trephination. A hole is drilled in the skull over the area of the subdural hematoma and the blood is suctioned out through the hole. Next is the craniotomy. It is a large section of the skull which is removed to allow better access to the subdural hematoma and reduce the pressure. The removed skull is placed shortly after the procedure. Next is craniectomy. A section of the skull is removed for an extended period of time to allow the injured brain to expand and swell without permanent damage. Craniectomy is not often used to treat subdural hematoma. People with severe subdural hematomas are often seriously ill requiring machine-supported breathing and other forms of life support. If a person has a bleeding problem or is taking blood thinners, measures should be taken to improve blood clotting. This may include giving medicines or blood products or reversal of any blood thinners when possible. Other medications to help reduce swelling or pressure in the brain or control seizures may also be used. 